Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabe's to here. Today we're doing another monk solo guide. This one for Ascendant Council. And this is in Bastion of Twilight, 10 man. So here you can see the talents and I'm using item level 503 gear at the time. So Chi Wave, healing elixirs for the heals primarily. Uh, Tiger Pet, just for extra damage because the other options are not really valid. There aren't enough targets. And yeah, pretty standard stuff. So this fight is not all that difficult, um, but let's just go back through the fight and I'll just walk through what I'm doing just to make sure I stay alive. So as far as I can tell, this fight does not have a hard Berserker and Rage timer. Um, I think it's just a soft and rage mechanic for when, when you're, you're fighting the final boss, but Leading up to that point, the name of the game is Survival. So if you're just very careful about avoiding the abilities you need to avoid, staying alive, keeping yourself topped off, uh, you can slowly whittle the bosses down throughout the first two phases and prepare yourself for the sort of soft and rage DPS burn time of the final phase. So when you begin, you'll be fighting Faludius and Ignatius. And this is obviously fire and ice. So the big thing to concern yourself with here is to be out of melee range of Faludius when he does Glaciate. Uh, if you're too close, this will kill you, even at this level. So try not to be too close. If you get waterlogged from a water bolt, you need to make sure you step into the ice, or excuse me, the fire, to clear it before Glaciate is cast. Otherwise, you'll be frozen, and that will also kill you. Uh, but other than that, stay away from Glaciate. Then you need to watch for Ignatius to cast Aegis of Flame. Uh, ideally, you want to save up some of your chi and energy resources when this is coming up off cooldown so that you can quickly burst some DPS on Ignatius. And this will allow you to eat through the Absorb rapidly. And once you've eaten through the Aegis of Flame Absorption, uh, you'll be able to interrupt the cast. If you don't interrupt it and it goes its full duration, it will be kind of dangerous. So there you can see I stepped out to avoid Glaciate and then back in to finish off the Absorb. And once I killed the Absorb, uh, you can then interrupt the spell. It no longer is protected uh, cast time. And that's pretty much it for this phase. So it's not that difficult. Just avoid Glaciate, clear your waterlogged if you get it. There I'm stepping in the fire to do that. Try to keep the boss's health even, and if you get one of them near 25%, stop doing Cake Smash or AE attacks until you can push the other one to that same percentage. Because as soon as one of them hits 25, the phase will end. So you want both of them as low as possible at or below 25% health when you transition. Once that happens, you'll get the next two guys. So Arion and Terrestra are obviously Earth and Lightning. Uh, this phase is very simple. You can arguably ignore all the basic mechanics because nothing in here is dangerous enough to kill you, basically. Um, but that said, as you may recall from the raid, you basically have to get the Tornado or the Grounded buff um, that is the opposite of whatever special ability is being cast next. So... If there's a lightning that's being cast, then you want to be grounded. And if a quake is being cast, you want the tornado buff. Uh, but as I said, neither is very dangerous. So if it's you know causing you problems to get those, then don't worry about it so much. You can just heal through the damage, use a cooldown or guard, whatever. And that's pretty much it. Um, so the good news is other than that, nothing is going to kill you in this. So just simply DPS these guys down evenly. Uh, you'll notice that Arion likes to teleport away and cast on you from range. So you'll generally have to focus more DPS on him compared to Terrestra, who will all be, always be in melee range. In addition, when Terrestra's put up the absorption shield, uh, you're going to break it and do a, a good chunk of damage all at once. So you have to be careful not to get Terrestra lower than Arion by a significant margin. Um, otherwise, the same basic rule applies, just keep them even in health, 
and push them below that 25% mark at around the same time. So there you can see I got Arion a little bit high. He's at 30%, but it shouldn't matter too much. And then once that phase ends, these guys will combine, and then you'll fight the final boss here. So the monstrosity is definitely the most difficult aspect of the fight, but not all that hard. Uh, you can keep him just centered in one of the puddles. I tried to do that just there, but he moved slightly because he's an asshole. <laughs> uh, but you can keep him in the middle within one of the puddles, and if you can survive it, you'll get an achievement. Uh, not that difficult. But either way, while he's in a puddle, the puddle will grow in size. So if you are standing in a puddle, and, or he's standing in one also, then eventually the whole room will be full and you can't avoid it. So if you find that the damage from being in a puddle is too high, just simply kite him around the room and the puddles will not grow very quickly and you can keep him out of it generally. Other than that, uh, he's just got the lightning ability that's going to be channeled on you a lot. So just heal through the damage, use your cooldowns when you get low, uh, guard plus your heals are a great combination to heal yourself back up to full, and uh, otherwise this is your DPS burn time. So you want to use your DPS potion, your tiger pet, all that stuff, and just push them down as quick as possible. And avoid the flame or the lava seeds on the ground. Those do a sizable chunk of damage and knock you in the air, I believe. So that is the monstrosity and concludes the Ascendant Council solo guide. So as usual, thanks for watching and good luck.